Okay, welcome back everyone. So, this video started as an H-pop testing video. And over the week I've been doing it before work, waiting on parts to show up. Um, the title changed, the reason I'm filming it changed, and the outcome really changed. So now it's turned into uh, more of a why you need to do really good diagnostics. Um, I almost, a couple different times because of impatience, I almost pulled the trigger on probably about an $800 H-pop. Uh, it was uh, about $706 on Rock Auto for the cheap one, plus tax and shipping. So a couple times I almost pulled the trigger and just ordered it because I wanted that truck running. And uh, stay tuned, watch till the end and see the crazy thing that happened and blew my mind. So, going to be testing the high pressure oil pump output. The thing is, I was able to determine, if you watch uh, that other video, that um, I do have low pressure. There's a code for it, and I'm getting up to about 269 PSI coming out of that pump into the uh, ICP sensor. Plus, you can unplug that sensor and it'll default like 700 PSI. So none of that stuff worked. I know I do have low pressure. What I'm going to show you here is a little test kit that I purchased. This is one of the two lines that come off the H-pop. You have one going to the driver's side head and one going to the passenger side. This is a number six JIC for reference. And I use an adapter and put this plug on there because that's, that's what I had. So that will plug off the passenger side head. This is quarter inch thread female and that goes to the number six JIC there and got this handy little 4,000 PSI liquid gauge with a quarter inch thread on it so that's going to go right into there so basically passenger side we're going to just block right off with the number six JIC with a cap on it and then on this end number six JIC to quarter inch female to thread the gauge on. I already had the plug set up, um, just a bunch of miscellaneous fittings. So all I had to buy was that 4,000 PSI gauge you can see there. And that was like just under $27. And then that adapter to go from uh, the JIC to the quarter inch for the gauge. And that was $1.69. So grand total, I spent like $30 on this uh, testing setup, not bad. Okay, so I'm back here, day two. I have my H-pop back on down there. Now I hooked the uh, the high pressure oil lines back up and you can see I disconnected this one off the uh, passenger side valve cover and I put this plug on there that I showed you in the other part of the video. And then on this side, I got that adapter to go from, I believe it's a number six JIC to a quarter inch with a 4,000 PSI mechanical gauge. So, fuel is not hooked up. I'm going to try to crank this motor over and see what kind of pressure we get out of here uh, by deadheading the pump. Okay, I gave the starter a little break there. I don't know how long uh, it takes to prime this thing. Well, I'm going to do a little more Googling, but I'm pretty sure that proves to me that that uh, high-pressure oil pump is junk because it looked like it got almost halfway between 0 and 500, and my diagnostic tool was telling me 269 PSI max while I was cranking it before. So I would say that the uh, scan tool and the mechanical gauge are lining up pretty good, proving that it's not an O-ring bleeding out under the valve cover on the injector, but it is the H-pop. It is the H-pop. Okay, so I did want to make a quick note that although this uh, high-pressure oil pump is isolated from the injectors, there's still one other thing that could be a problem, and that is the IPR. So if the IPR is bad or it's not receiving its 12 volts or ground, that could be a problem. So I'm going to show you that uh, I did buy a new IPR just to rule that out, and I did check the voltage. And so if we had the low pressure still, then it guarantees it's the pump. So this right here is the plug for the IPR. I have the black on the uh, ground wire and the red on the power wire. You can see on the multimeter, 13.1718 volts. Um, I do have a battery charger on it right now. So yes, it does have power and ground. That rules that out. I do have 
this IPR removed. Now the previous owner told me he had just purchased this and it was brand new. Um, I bought a little uh, rebuild kit for it, which was only like the O-rings and all that. I have that in another video. It does not do anything for the solenoid part of the electronics. So I was still a little skeptical before buying that pump. So I just went ahead and bought a brand new sensor. So now I have this. I'm going to put this in. I know it has power and ground. If I have low pressure on the mechanical gauge, that absolutely tells me that that high pressure oil pump is bad because the injectors are blocked out of the equation right now. So it's isolated right down to the pump at this point. No way. Check this out. So this IPR that I was told was new and then I tried to rebuild it uh, still had the low pressure. No way. So I just put this new uh, Chinese one in for $50 just to rule that out. Watch this. No way. Huh. So either that IPR really wasn't new or it was new defective. Wow, uh, I'm stunned right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook all these lines back up in this fuel filter and uh, see what happens. All right, everything's hooked up. All the lines and clamps are back on. I know there's a ton of air in the oil and the fuel system, but I think I'm about to become a big Ford guy. Okay, not going to let that excitement burn the starter up. Give it a minute. Almost. 